And welcome to my Idaho friends. In case you've forgotten, because it's been a while, I am your host, Jaime Lima, and we're gonna do the thing. It has been a while, Idaho, but I'm excited to be back over here with Argos Productions. Shout out to Justin, Erica, and Miranda behind the cameras. It's Ellen. It's Ellen, and we're off to a great start. Uh, so yeah, so Argos Productions, my Idaho friends, Jaime, the whole thing, we're gonna get started right away. Our guests today, Sarah Cunningham, principal cat lady over at Ethos. What? Ethos. Uh, I have an accent, and I just got back from Europe. It's a great vacation. Sarah Cunningham, principal. I call you a cat lady. Ethos. Principal catalyst mm -hmm. at Ethos Design and Remodel. Did I say it right that time? Yeah. All right, Sarah. Thank you for being. I do have two cats, though, for the record. Oh, there you go. Does that? Does that, Does that count? Like, I don't know. I figure. I think you have to have more. I don't know. I think it's kind of like children. That if you have three, you might as well have ten. There's a lot of kids. I only had one. I'm just saying. Like yeah. you, you have two hands. If you have two kids, and you're yeah. like down the grocery aisle, you're yeah, holding yeah. one another. But if you have three, there's always one going rogue. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the same thing with cats. Could be. I don't know. So, but principal catalyst mm -hmm. at Ethos. Mm -hmm. Uh, design and remodel, Sarah Cunningham. <laughs> thank you so much for being in the show. I appreciate you. Thanks, Jaime. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It has been a hot minute. Um, the way this works, mm -hmm. okay, is that there's no script. I know you know that because I haven't given you one. I'm just reminding the people that are watching that <laughs> might care or not. Hi, mom. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but no, so uh, I, I want to cover uh, your journey because uh, I, I, I find it fascinating, you know, what you do uh, with your team at, at the company that you're at, mm -hmm. okay? And you'll get to give us all the details. Sure. But that's also not something that, that was always like that. You, you have had, you know, to go through a whole lot of yeah. trial and error and do yeah. a number of things. Yeah. Where was Sarah Cunningham 10 years ago? 10 years ago, I was doing everything I could to not, go, not be bankrupt. Ah, yeah. all right. Because right? we were, the country was just kind of pulling through and coming out of the recession. Mm -hmm. And having started my company in 2010, um, you know, we during the recession, it it uh, getting the work and getting the client, getting the pipeline, you know, mm -hmm. was a bit of a challenge. Okay. I mean, I was scraping by, but uh, yeah, I was definitely doing everything I could to not foreclose on my house and and go under and. Um, it was really just honestly um, getting through that financial challenge was a lot, but it was the threat of having to move that lit the fire under me because I hate moving. Oh. I like the packing and the, yeah. the, like, the, the tried, like trying to find the new, I was like, uh-uh. And moving home or you yeah. know whatever I might have to do that a lot of adults did, move in with mom and dad. <laughs> I'm right. like, no, as a single mom yeah. at whatever 38 I was. That mm -hmm. wasn't an option, so, yeah. Wow, you abhorred yeah. the process of moving and living yeah. with your parents so that, much oh, that yeah. it made you eventually <laughs> into a successful business owner. It did. Like, I wasn't going to open up this wine, but now but I But you're going to do it now? I'm going to do it. So, okay. So, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, starting your company. Uh -huh. All right, so yep. 10 years ago, not trying to go bankrupt just like everybody else, yep. or at least, yep. you know, the majority yep. of the country, right? Mm -hmm. Um Congratulations on Thank you. you know succeeding. Thank you. But uh, tell us a little bit about your company then, since you're talking about that. Okay, so um, I, I started my company as Desiderata Interiors in 2010, mm -hmm. um, inspired by the poem by Max Ehrman. Yeah, I'm very familiar and... with poetry. <laughs> I'm so, so glad you said it's that. It's a great though. poem. It's just it talks about living a life of quality and of integrity and purpose and meaning, and uh, that's really cool. Yeah, it's a it's a great poem. And so desiderata means things greatly desired or deeply wanted, and nobody could pronounce it or spell it. Oh. And you're having a heck of a time with that cat, man. Because I'm making eye contact Is with that? you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's, Can I see? Good oh. work. Good work. You got there. Yeah. But uh, nobody could spell it or pronounce it, so it made it really hard for them to find me and like to like define the company other uh -huh. than Sarah Cunningham. And so they just looked for me anyways. Mm -hmm. So in 2014, I rebranded to Ethos because Ethos meaning kind of your um, your world, that which defines your worldview, your value set, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of the sum of it. 
And uh, so that's when I rebranded to Ethos. Mm -hmm. And you can go just crank it. No, I'm just go waiting. Just I'm waiting in between sentences. So you see it. <laughs> It's all about so, you, Sarah. Uh-huh. <laughs> or is that just weirder that I just wish? It, it's good. <laughs> is it killing you a little bit? A little bit. It's crazy. Okay, I'll stop. It's slow. In slow motion. You know, um, it's not my first time drinking wine. No. All right? <laughs> Settle down, Idaho. I feel your judgment. Mm -hmm. It could be my former bartender judgment. I don't know. Maybe a little bit. but I went too deep. Um. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> We're back. Do you need some help? No, I, I don't need no help. That. I can help you with that. I bet you could, I, I but could. now I'm embarrassed. I, oh, okay. The cork is like really, oh, what's Look. up? Yeah. See? There's like a hinge in that. Um, good job. Yeah. Mm. Oh, nice. Nice work with the applause. Yeah. Eric, I he, he deserved that applause. He needed it. Nobody's getting wine but me Okay. <laughs> So you rebranded. Yeah. I rebranded. You know, nobody could find you because you know, mm -hmm. like the, the the point is yep. really hard to talk about. And spell. No pressure. You don't no. feel like you have to. I'm curious what you got. It smells good. It is lovely. It is lovely. Yeah. We're going back into fall, so it's nice to have. It's red one of my very very yeah. favorite wines. Oh, excellent. But you know, they don't pay me anything to promote them, so. <laughs> Cheers. We're just gonna drink it. Cheers. <laughs> it's local. Okay. There you go. It's a, it's I'm great, kidding. They're great. friends. It's Talaya wine. It's ah, a Coupla. Oh, nice. It's a 2017. Awesome. Just okay. for you. Just for me. It's one special. of my favorites. Yeah. So, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. So, tell me a little so. bit more, you know, about the work, right? Yeah. So, so you so are started, under a lot of pressure and doing all these things. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to, I'll just like wrap up. I was, that was the corkscrew. It was really distracting. But I'll, I'll take you back there so I can yeah. finish that thought, right? Which is ethos design remodel and mm -hmm. so when i was doing desiderata interiors people didn't understand the scope right and so you have, you have to come up with a name that helps helps people know in a short you know clip what it is that you do so we added the design remodel aspect and i started it as a designer because i'm a creative i'm an artist and i've done a lot of different art and modalities and and but i wanted to have more control over the product and I knew, I understood the order of operations in project management, I had done everything from sales and design and project management. So I basically took over the project management rather than like trying to collaborate with a contractor who would often, other contractors who would basically dispose of some of the design concepts along the way. And then you, and then the final product is either something I, like I couldn't put my name on or that I never got to see or that I get, didn't get to be, be involved in the process. So I was like, I'm, I'm taking over the general contractor role. Love that. And so that's kind of when, I mean, and that's what I was doing, but really had to come up with a name and an identity that helped people understand that. Um, and so the process along the way and getting people to understand that I could, was co capable of doing that. Um, because I mean, we certainly live in an area where women are not perceived as, you know, they, you immediately think of a male gender when you think of general contractor. Like, it just comes to mind. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, yeah, so that's kind of how that came to be and helping people understand it. And just, you know, we do everything from design and build and the remodels and additions and ADUs and um, development and real estate. And it's just kind of a holistic approach to the built environment. I like that. Yeah. yeah. That's a true description, a holistic approach right there. I, I'm going to move us away from that, sure. from, from being in the past, but you know, yeah. you, you touched on something that I was going to bring up anyway. So I'm so yeah. glad you said it, you know, uh, not many, uh, uh, lady general contractors, you know, right. uh, especially here in the great state of Idaho, because mm -hmm. it's awesome, yeah. but it also, it's, it's, it's not sometimes. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you mind sharing some of those challenges? Uh, mm -hmm. Because with a holistic approach, it's not, I mean, the general contractor, that, that's really easy, right? Like, oh, you're not a dude. Mm -hmm. You're not a dude named Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> right? But uh, there's, there's other things, right? right? Uh, project management. Mm -hmm. Right, like right. nobody's keeping any secrets, yeah. uh, <laughs> and uh, having the ability to have X amount of control over mm -hmm. your projects, mm -hmm. and you get to call out. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to delude the conversation for anybody that is watching, but you get to call out when something is not being done yeah. the way you want it right. to a specification. Yeah. So I can only imagine a, f a number of the challenges, but that that's for you to tell. Yeah, uh, you you want to you want to share a little bit of that? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I that's the quality control, right? So I think, and <clears throat> I, I'm I'm going to speak somewhat in binary terms, and I and I apologize for that, but I no, but yeah. it's just it is the way um, that. 
women often have an emotional intelligence, and I don't mean to say that men don't have it, but women, you know, by and large have, uh, by nature, an emotional intelligence and, uh, and that affects communication and how we empathize and how we understand and how we create and mm -hmm. perceive, right, and engage with people, right? And so having that, but but what that also, so that's that's been a benefit and a strength, but the perception of women in construction has been a challenge and getting people over that hump, right? And there's this there's this desire to, when I've tried to explain to people, and I, I went to different business mentors and coaches early on and tried to explain the big picture, the holistic picture, and I can't tell you how many times people wanted to pigeonhole me <laughs> into, you just stick with one thing, just stick with one thing. And I'm like, well, the built environment is one thing, right? right. Um, like, there's... It's it's when you think about it in terms of community and you think about it in terms of how things come together Just like the body is one thing it has a heart and it has lungs and it has a brain and it has a spine But it's all one functioning thing the built environment is one thing and if you want I look at it as a big picture So one of the challenges really has been getting people to understand that and that I'm capable of so much more than one thing And I'm not a one-track person mm -hmm. um, And so my goal has just been to build this company Right? to have all the right people in place. And certainly some of the challenges has been hiring the right people and finding the right people, and that happens, right? It's just part of right. growing. Um, but getting over the, the perception, right, um, that women can be general contractors, in, in a, and, I, and that may or may not be specific to this area, right? In, in some right. ways it probably is, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and, and so just getting that, that validation in people's minds and eyes of us and I mean ethos is doing great right now and and I hear about it from a lot of people but it was not overnight and even you know I can I've seen it even in different circles of friends you know they have a, a male friend who shows up in a truck with a tool belt and immediately may or maybe any level of the spectrum of skill set right <laughs> but if you have a tool belt and you're a guy you immediately are validated as a competent contractor, right? You know something. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, I may not be the carpenter, but I know what quality carpentry looks like, right? Mm -hmm. I know the basics and the mechanics of how to put things together. And I learned that in my background in building sets and doing takeoffs and, and even in my five years as doing sales and design and project management at the company I worked for before I started my company. And so um, I, I have a lot of, like, just a, a wide breadth of knowledge of like the skills and what it takes to, to get something and, and, mm -hmm. and even talking to someone you can kind of tell by the way that they communicate it, what their level of competence is, yeah. right? And, um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's just, it's it's been, the challenges have been getting people to understand like the scale and scope of what I'm capable of because they want to mm -hmm. minimize it or an invalidation as a general contractor. Um, yeah, and then just the growth, the team growth, and getting the right people on the team. Man. Yeah. Hooray for challenges. Yeah. Good for you, they sister. Do. They They improve. Hey. You, they, you grow. Yeah, we all grow through challenges, right? Yeah. So that's really cool. You know, you, you were able to leverage your technical background that, that you gained through a lot of experience, you know, doing all this other stuff. Um, and then, again, that, that validation piece, you know, when it comes to not just um, the professional side, but the prof personal side when it's your baby, it's your business, and mm. you uh, have, uh, you know, o oversight of every aspect of it. Clearly, there's, 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 uh, you know, well, I guess, I almost said happy ending. Disregard, Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't ended. <laughs> it's we still haven't, going. We haven't ended nothing. We're still going. <laughs> so, but, you know, through a lot of hard work and grind, you know, <laughs> fast forward to... I'm going to go over my choices of words <laughs> at a different time. Okay. We're just going. We're back. We're back. Um, so, you know, right now, mm -hmm. uh, super busy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great team. Mm -hmm. uh, the Amazing. original plan, you know, was to have a little special somebody over here right next to you, but it didn't work out. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's too bad that Aaron couldn't join us. But, um, you know, tell, tell me more about the now. So uh, when you look back and you reflect, you know, what you were mm -hmm. just sharing, like all those challenges, not, you know, not just not just starting a business, yeah. not just like launching mm -hmm. something that, that, that it has a, a holistic approach, um, but then also doing it as a woman. Mm -hmm. Where are we at right now? Hey. Wow. Right now, we are sort of 
we're in pre-development on a couple of development projects, so that's exciting. The team, we have eight of us now. Mm -hmm. um, I recently promoted Erin Sorensen, so she started with me a year ago as project manager. And um, I recently promoted her to vice president of engineering and construction. Ooh. I know. And it's so funny because we've known each other for almost 13 years. And we learned about each other in our neighborhood ag advocacy because we were both on our uh, respective neighborhood association boards. And we're doing a lot in neighborhood advocacy and neighbor works and affordable housing and um, refugee uh, advocate, advocation I was. Mm -hmm. And so... <clears throat> That's we've just been seeing each other, and for a, the p couple of years I would see her because we officed out a trailhead for a bit, and I check in. What are you up to? What are you up to? Right. You know, and and uh, you know, there people had told us that we needed to know each other, and we just really a little bit, but on the periphery. And then I don't know. It just was, I called her up and said, "Hey, you want to come by? You want to come work with me?" And she wasn't ready to leave the company she was with, and now she's with me. And right, yeah, it's been a year, and it has been a dream. It was like we are in each other's heads. It's so weird. <laughs> we can finish each other's sentences, and we'll literally we have the same. It's crazy. It's it's an amazing, amazing um, synergy that we have. And and when to have that, I call her my work wife, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah. you know she's she's become one of my best friends. I love her. I trust her. I know she's got my back, and I've got hers. And she has she has we have this amazing counterbalance of skills and personality traits that works really well within the team. So yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know Erin as well as you do, yeah. uh, and and I don't want to like, you know, to, to, I, I wish she was here because then I can say these things in person and not be like she's a little go getter, <laughs> that she Aaron, is. Uh, she's which super is true, driven. but she at is. the same time, like you. you there's a certain level of passion, and you know, a lot of people throw that mm -hmm. word around. You know, when it comes to like yeah. businesses, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being a business owner or like being a team member, and especially when you like have, you know, you're part of like a management yeah. team, and you're the one that is actually doing the managing. Mm -hmm. it, it, it it can be very consuming because it surely gets lonely in yeah. any leadership position. Okay. Um, so listening to you describe how well you guys complement each other and balance each other out, like, mm -hmm. I, I can totally see that mm -hmm. because she she was kicking butt where she was at. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm mm -hmm. sure they yeah. they were not necessarily like super thrilled that you were. Well, <laughs> I'll uh, let her speak to that. Right, <laughs> that's right. right. No, but yeah. yeah. And, that's, and that's, I was kind of, I was really hoping you know, for her you know, yeah. to, to be here because I, I think, you know, I think of that background that she had, you know, mm -hmm. uh, with that line of work and speaks to like the, the civic involvement that you guys yeah. had, you know, in all yeah. those boards and, and things along those lines. And then to jump on your team, it just makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. sometimes it's not necessarily the money or the work. Sometimes it's the yeah. people. Yeah, well, and, and, and by she... sometimes I mean a lot, and and yeah. compensation and all those other things just kind of like sure. become organic, you know, yeah. when you are running a you know a, a successful enterprise and success, you know, that being like whatever it is for yeah. for different folks, right? But I I think it's really cool, and I wish I wish you would have been able to be here because I wanted to see her face when you said that because I knew you were gonna say it. <laughs> so hi. <Erin. laughs> well, she, you know, it's funny because she's she's heard me say it, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things I do um, on in our team meetings, so I have a we have weekly team meetings, but on our monthly I do these gratitudes, mm -hmm. and you should see everybody cringe the first time you make them do it. They're just like, I can't believe you're making me do this, and then after they've been through it. They love it because it's great when you have, so I have everybody go around the table and, mm -hmm. and tell everyone in the team something that you're grateful for about them. And, <clears throat> and of course, you know, when somebody gets to sit, you know, when somebody gets to give the gratitude, I mean, giving is receiving. You receive a gift and giving a gift and gratitude and expression of gratitude is a gift, right? Mm -hmm. um, and to acknowledge something that you're grateful about somebody and then that person to get to hear from you what you appreciate about them is a beautiful exchange, right? And it's a great way to, for the team to be able to pay more attention to what the things, to acknowledge the things about each other mm -hmm. and, um, and just building that sort of camaraderie in the team. And so, <clears throat> but I told her our last meeting, you know, when I did my gratitude, I told her I was madly in love with her. So, <laughs> 
which yeah. you know you know her so you understand yeah i totally understand I mean, yeah i know her i mean I, yeah she's you know. amazing yeah she yeah. is pretty amazing yeah we have an yeah. amazing team so you know there's so there's aaron and and uh brian is our site superintendent mm -hmm. um we've got two carpenters we've got a lead carpenter jim and his assistant carpenter wyatt and um, anna marie is our design assistant naya is our principal lead designer now and um, because my goal is to get myself out of the field on the design remodel side mm -hmm. and so I can be more involved in the real estate and development side. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and we're, our team is there and then we've got Alyssa. I didn't want to leave Alyssa out. <laughs> She's our <laughs> administrative assistant. And um, yeah, so and we're, we've got just a few more roles to fill, but we're, we're getting there. And then I'll be able to build out the real estate team and then the development side and things will just keep growing in that way. That's where we're headed. That's awesome. Yeah. What are the values for your company? Oh, wow. Yeah. Honestly, integrity, um, eco, I, I say eco thoughtful. I feel like eco conscious and sustainability are overused, but being mindful about ecology and the environment, and, mm -hmm. and that's both in human labor, right? So there's economic, there's economics, um, sustainability in terms of, you know, products that we buy and the companies we buy from, right? And that doesn't mean that we never buy from Amazon, let's be real, okay? <laughs> no, right. You know, um, but <clears throat> we want to be as mindful as possible in, in how we buy and what we buy, the products we use, um, the community that we're, we're it, existing within, how we impact the community. Um, we, we do everything we can to keep things out of landfill. So if we can, um, when we're demolishing, we want to extract whatever we can, we'll, we'll give it away, we'll send it to Second Chance or Restore, mm -hmm. give people opportunities to take it, do they want to give it to a friend, Any anything we can divert from the landfill we will. We've got um, bags on site to kind of take because every time you're ordering materials, like there's boxes, of course boxes and boxes and boxes from shipping, so we'll you know, put the cardboard aside to recycle that. I personally take large sheets of cardboard to my yard for mulching <clears throat> so I can kill the grass because my goal is to kill the grass in my yard, which is an ambitious goal because grass is a gnarly weed, um, contrary to the perception of it to being this amazing rug product on our yard, which is a bizarre thing to me, but I'm... <laughs> My neighbors look at me like I'm crazy when I tell them if I could just garden the yeah. whole yes. yard, and it could just be a garden, and they yes. don't have to worry about. Like to me, it's just such a waste to be watering. Uh huh. Okay. <sighs> yeah. So yeah. like it's like high desert. Don't even get me started. Like mm -hmm. all my, a lot of my friends love yeah. golf. Maybe you do too. I go to a golf course and I'm just right. <sighs> See, water the golf course for the sports people that want to play golf. But but having a yard in a high desert when we have climate change issues and we have a sh we're, we're having more drought in different areas, like water, quite frankly, is life. We don't live without it, right? right? We don't exist without it. So anyways, it's just, it's, it's in how we live. It's an integrity thing um, in terms of our, of our values, of our ethos, integrity. Um, my goal is to be integrous with our clients, with our team. Um, and and that doesn't mean I'm infallible. It doesn't mean that we're infallible. It mm -hmm. just means that you strive to live with integrity. And when you're out of it, you acknowledge it, you own it. You know, it's accountability, right? Accountability yeah. is part of integrity. And so, mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, own up to it and, and fix it and move on, right? So um, creativity. Right, and being driven and sustainability and community. We're real big on community because, as you know, both Aaron and I have been involved in our neighborhoods and communities in the past. And right now I had to pause because I was volunteering myself into poverty for a while. And I was like, I can't. This, I'm never going to be poor enough to help homeless people. You know, like right. you actually have to thrive and make yourself successful if you have the capacity to do because you're in a better position to help people and lift up other people up. Yeah. So. No, absolutely. There's no way I you know, spraying yourself too thin and, and yeah. just bring you know, grinding yourself to the bone mm -hmm. for causes that you're passionate about. Yeah. Like I, I, I get that, but there's so much more of an impact that you can have when yep. you're able to place yourself in a in a in a situation or, or, or at least have the have the foundation in which like you yeah. know that when you help it's not gonna negatively affect your personal well-being yeah. and that encompassing everything right it's from resources. like from like it's, time mm -hmm. finances like mm -hmm. your your like your your emotional capital yep. <laughs> so, yeah. so a lot of stuff mm -hmm. 
See, yeah, I can I, say things. I know you can. <laughs> I'm confident you can. It does come down to resources. So, yeah. I, you know, I, I really kind of shifted into self-care because that goes into your emotional capital, right? So yeah. you, have to, no. you have to take care of yourself so that you have the mental and creative bandwidth to handle your paperwork, to to read your emails and respond. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're spread thin, you just you don't have that. You don't have the mental capacity, the emotional capacity, the physical capacity, and the financial capacity. And so yeah. you you have to take care of yourself so that you can take care of others. And so what does what does Sarah Cunningham does for self care? What do I do for self care? I do a lot of things for self care because <laughs> I'm a self care junkie. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. You know, I, so you yeah. gotta you gotta manage a lot of people, I, you know, and you gotta be at your very best. I do. Yeah. Um, so on my ideal ideal days, and I've kind of slacked because I, like I said, I had a breakthrough case a couple weeks ago, and it kind of. Um, so I've been two weeks out of my negative test, and I'm still kind of building my stamina and stuff, but. But in my in my usual days, I'll get up at five and hit yoga at six, and then do a little quick workout, and then I'll do a walking meditation, and um, I like to ride my bike um, mm -hmm. to the gym to do because then I've got like just the the cardio and you get your blood moving, your energy going, and and it's just time by yourself to think and have the, the cool air in your face and just like just get invigorated. Um, so that's kind of my my workout and meditation routine in the mornings. Um, I love to hike, love to hike, but hiking is my church. I prefer doing it alone um, because I just, that's where I, I get creative ideas. Mm -hmm. That's where I just kind of like process and let things go. Um, <clears throat> I just get a lot of clarity and a lot of resolve yeah. in that. Um, I love heading to the mountains on the weekends and going, just getting off, you know, off cell and, uh, and hot springing. Um, I love hot springs. And uh, I uh, have in the past, and I'm going to get back into it now that I'm COVID clear. <laughs> um, I would do a, uh, to every other week, I would do a massage with a local masseuse who does this amazing blend of, it's like yoga massage, Thai massage, and stretching. And it's intense, and any, any quirks that you might have in your body, she is determined to remove them before you leave her office and it can be it can be really intense because <laughs> yeah all right yeah she works out the knots but i mean that, that's, that's kind of my self-care so like i'm like i love my self-care <laughs> oh that's really cool i like what you say about like hiking when you uh, refer to clarity you know it's not something like that you just put on your like online dating profile for your app <laughs> like oh i love hiking mm -hmm. it's like of course you do <laughs> um <laughs> which there's nothing wrong with that you know everybody sure. walks or whatever you know i'm just I'm just talking smack but uh, the reason why i bring that up is just reminding me of one of my favorite books um mike Irwin, the author is uh, lead yourself first mm -hmm. when uh are you familiar no, but I understand the, uh, the ideology. Right. So, so, yeah. So the whole thing is just like being able to like find clarity through solitude mm -hmm. and has a number of uh, case studies and historical samples of yeah. like, you know, yeah. different figures during super crazy circumstances and mm -hmm. which is like, oh, I need to make some decisions, yep. <laughs> you know, yep. and like I'm going to go for a walk mm -hmm. or a hike, if you may. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, good mm -hmm. on you. So what... What are we looking at then for the future? So we have reviewed, you know, you know where we were at, mm -hmm. where we are now, and your awesome team and all the things that you do in order to take care of them and yourself, mm -hmm. and therefore be, you know, the awesome company and, and team that you guys are. Mm -hmm. What's next? What's next? And and you know, break that down however you like. Mm -hmm. I like the ten ten. Like 10 in the past and right meows and then, yeah. then like 10 into the future, but don't I mean if it's tomorrow or 50 years from now I don't care. You I I, I, um, I Don't think in a linear fashion, mm -hmm. so I probably wouldn't do the 10 10 <laughs> but this um, one. I Right now we just moved into a new space Okay. So, because um, like I said, I, I started out running my business from my dining room table, as many people do, mm -hmm. and then officed out of Trailhead for a long time, and then we moved over into uh, the Silver Creek Park Center office, which they moved locations, and we needed something bigger for our team. And so, um, Aaron has this amazing commercial building over in the Whitewater area, and it was a Montessori 
uh, school, then was, became a daycare, and so and now we're doing tenant improvement, turning it into our headquarters, um. and it's pretty epic. Where um, I just did another, I've done epoxy countertops before, and I did a custom design on this, of course. and poured the epoxy. <laughs> of course. And uh, of course. so it's it's we we're just putting some really vibrant touches to it, just to show people. Um, really what's out there and what's possible rather than, because you see a lot of, I feel like we see a lot of design elements regurgitated through some of the more uh, common um, home sites or TV shows or whatever, you know? And uh, I just like, I, I like to get a little bit more whimsical and fun and vibrant because it's such an opportunity, it's a canvas, it's an opportunity for creativity and art, right? Right. And so that's how I approach it. And so that's um, what's happening with our, our headquarters. Um, <clears throat> and then just because our construction team is really kind of almost really to the point where it's where I want it, like ideally, I don't want it to get so big because I really do like that small intimate team. Um, but then it's really just, getting that buttoned up, then building out the real estate team and building out the development team. And um, yeah, kind of continuing on. We, we want, I would love to do some micro communities, um, like cottage home communities, um, just sustainable minded, smaller footprint lots, smaller footprint homes that really, mm -hmm. um, I've seen some communities, there's a community over on, um, called I think it's called Dwell on Bainbridge, Bainbridge Island, mm -hmm. where they have like all of their green spaces are edibles, pollinators, right? And permaculture landscaping. And you have paths that are interconnected and you have, <clears throat> so it's not all about how many cars can you park here? It's, you've got a dedicated parking spot, but then you walk into your home and you've got, you know, thriving ecology, right? That isn't how big can your grassy lawn be, you know? Um, so it's just a different approach to, to building, to developing and building community. Mm -hmm. um, and I am, uh, let's see, gosh, there's some, a, a commercial corridor in town that I have kind of like a, a thing for it's my pet if you will my pet passion okay, project okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tell me more it's uh, orchard is is a street that i love because it's got so much diversity but it's a dysfunctional street in terms of traffic and how it moves traffic and how it engages people right mm -hmm. you can't safely walk or bike down orchard you know people do it i do it you know at 5 a.m but i don't do it i wouldn't take my kids right on a bike ride yeah on orchard. right and so, but you have these amazing restaurants and stores. You've got such a, a great ethnic mix. You've got, you've got Tango's, you've got Foodland Market, you've got um, Boex, Bosnian Express, you've got mm -hmm. these African markets, you've got Larkin Larder, you've got, you know, on and on. There's this great, just like eclectic mix of businesses that surprisingly are diverse. Amazing. Yeah, surprisingly yeah. diverse. And yeah. if you're, like if you're not paying attention, all of a sudden you you'll fly like, by oh. it, like right? Argentinian empanada place. Yes. There's like a Mexican butcher. Yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah, yeah there's all it sorts is. of things. Yeah, it's so cool, and I love yeah. it for that. But it's but going back to that built environment and that that human co relationship with the built environment, it's it's an unhealthy corridor. Right, and so when you make corridors healthy and you make them more designed towards human engagement, right, so that it's more designed to human participation within that space. It's right now it's designed for the vehicle to move cars. Right. Right, and so if we redesign and re that space, um, then we can make it so that people walk and engage. And and, and you see, we see Eighth Street. You know, I mean, it's 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 an obvious example of creating space that is designed human-centric, yeah. right? Yeah, that was built for a pedestrian lifestyle. Absolutely. And that you're able to interact mm -hmm. and, yeah. and to spend time. Mm -hmm. But it's thriving because it was designed as such. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so because, because humans want to engage where they see other humans ex engaging. Humans don't want to do uh, have activities Right where they don't see other people and they become more dilapidated. Right? It's it's a it's a in and out destination. <clears throat> of just like I need to find a parking spot and then mm -hmm. I need to get out. And mm -hmm. it's, it's the same way that I feel about Vista mm -hmm. because Orchard has the diversity, but with Vista it is the entrance to the capital of the state. Mm -hmm. You yeah. get you arrive from yeah. the airport yeah. and you have to take Vista. Yeah. 
if you're coming in for any sort of convention, chances are mm -hmm. you're staying downtown yep. and multiple. And like yeah. and downtown looks great, right? And it's mm -hmm. very pedestrian friendly, yeah. and it just like absolutely does like all the things that we want them to that, that we want our downtown to do. Mm -hmm. But you still have to get through Vista. Yeah. And I'm not saying that Vista is ugly, but Vista is not pretty. <laughs> and, and it's like, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where like it it, it has improved and mm -hmm. it, it's just a lot better. But like, you know, of course, yeah. it's, it's not up to me and I'm not yeah. the one. That, oh, I'm going to fix it all. But like if you were to think like, oh, we just hosted Tree Ford and everybody mm -hmm. that is coming in has to go mm -hmm. through there. Yeah. All right, and mm -hmm. it's like you get like your first taste of Boise in your line. Hmm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and yeah, so I want to touch a tiny little bit more on Orchard, okay. but I just know I happen to know because I got magic. Okay. I don't. I'm just, I just I can see Erica <laughs> raising her hand. Erica, what's up? <laughs> I need to let you know that we're at twenty six minutes until we're done. So okay. Ooh. Keeping track. And then I just want to point out Fairview. Yeah. Fairview. Fairview. Is that yeah. Home? Is you are right. It's a death trap. Okay. You're right. You're right. right. Yeah. So, thank you. You're so right. okay. So here we are, and I, no, I got my timer. <laughs> thank you, Erica. It's the best producer in the business. <laughs> um, so, what? is your idea of a solution for Orchard? Or at least where do we get started? You know, I will tell you that, that what we hear time and time again between developers and, uh, and, and these sort of projects is that there's this push between the city meets ACHD, mm -hmm. right? And any urban planner um, and developers that have done any projects outside of Idaho, and it's it's a, it's uncommon that the streets right are owned by one entity, one municipality, mm -hmm. right? And so it's like curb to curb is ACHD, and then you've got the city, and so then you've got this municipality, mm -hmm. and it's been a battle for a long time. I know that having the different commissioners coming into ACHD and having people that want to collaborate, right? Um, that that is. That's been an obstacle. Uh, that's not the solution. The solu I mean, the solution is within that obstacle, right? Is trying to gotcha. find that communication, right? And yeah. getting commissioners and people within ACHD. But then you've got, I mean, everybody says it's the other. I mean, I've heard people in ACHD say it's the city, and the city will say it's ACHD. It's so much easier to pass the buck and then not have you know, to like, take the. And yeah. then people who are developers and investors that are trying to improve are getting ping ponged. You know, and so <clears throat> I don't know what the answer is because I haven't. I, I feel like if I dove into the pool and really got like made that my sole project for a while, then I'd I'd either find a solution or I'd get burned out. <laughs> you know, so I have to take it in little steps. And I've done walking studies on Richard, and I think what I see is that in a one you had you don't have continuous sidewalks. And I I'm and I this is this is a contentious subject but um, I think orchard should have be on a, on a road diet so road diet at least having we call it a suicide lane right so the suicide lane is kind of like that's dotted on both sides so mm -hmm. that you can use it both as a passing lane but also as a center turn lane right, right. because <clears throat> right now there's no center turn lane unless you're at the intersections right. so if you're turning left on orchard like you, and you have as many cars moving as you do you can't get out Right. Right. And and so there's there's that as an issue. Passing when you've got there, you know, if you need to pass someone because you're there, the, the traffic's blocked up either because there's a there's a no left arrow turn and they, they try, you know, you're stuck. It's just yeah. like there's all kinds of traffic congestion and issues because it's not flowing. There's no sidewalks. There's no buffered bike lane, which is not a huge ordeal um, because you've got Philippi. And garden, which are two, you know, they don't go the entire distance, obviously, but you've got streets that have bike corridors on them. Right. Um, but there's areas where you do need to come out on orchard, which are really treacherous. Yeah, whenever you know? I'm on orchard, I'm not stopping. I'm yeah. just, I'm just getting you're, from point you're, A you're, to point exactly. B. I'm just trying to get and, to but, Overland. But, but that's my it. It's like redesigning the street so that it isn't just yeah. a, a, a thoroughfare that people yeah. understand, because there's so much like thriving and beautiful things happening yeah. in, in the businesses on Orchard, right? That yeah. we need to create it so that people want to stop. And so creating, so bike, better bike lanes where we need them, protected bike lanes, sidewalks, 
right? So that people can walk and get out because Again, going back to when you see human activity, you want to be there. And when you don't see act human activity, not only dilapidation, because, but it also becomes less safe, right, for people to actively engage in because that's where hmm, activity, you know, like, uh, I don't, don't want to use the word criminal, but like, act, like less savory activity happens when there's <laughs> less human bodies around to catch them and see people. And so, like, you don't see that happening a whole lot where there's lots of people around because, you know, people want to do things that they aren't supposed to be doing. Yeah. Where there's, you know, where nobody's around to catch them. You know what I'm saying? And so like, ha creating the street so that there's more human activity. And that means yeah. making it safer for people to be outside of their four ton square box and yeah. be, you know, in an unprotected human flesh bag on the street mm -hmm. so that they can engage in the businesses and, and walk around and sit yeah. on a patio and drink coffee and have a glass of wine or a beer or whatever yeah, on the I, street. I can I mean, there's a number of businesses there that come off the top of my head and I'm just like, oh, like, I'm going to stop by sometime. Mm -hmm. But when I'm driving through there, I just want to, I just want to get through. Right. I think there's like, what's it like, the, the cupboard or the... It's like a like a like a witch store. Or oh something. yeah, Crohn's Cupboard. Crohn's Cupboard. Yeah, it's a great store. I just want to stop out of curiosity. Like yeah, I just, I just want to go. Go into Crohn's Cupboard. Like I it's just want to go. You know. But it's also that. really but pain to pull in there and then to have your butt pulled out into the traffic. I have it's no so desire. So. I know. To to deal with that right yeah, there, especially because most of the time that I'm driving through there, I have my boys with me. I have my yeah. kids, and they're little, and it's yeah, just yeah. like. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So yeah. All right. We got to start moving towards the end. Okay. I want you to please tell the camera, not just me, and that one is your camera okay. over there. Yeah, I want you to let everybody know. That's a reminder, Frank, <laughs> right? And so, you know, so, uh, you know, of course, Sarah Kahneman, you know, yeah. they know who you are. But let them know again. Uh, a little bit more about your business, whatever it is that you want them to know, how they can get a hold of you, how they can get a hold of your team or whoever the point of contact is, okay. whether if there's a website, social media, email, something that you're supporting right now that you would like to share with everybody, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. So Ethos Design Remodel and Ethos Real Estate, you can find us online at ethosdesignremodel.com. The real estate website is available through that as well. You can find us on Facebook under both those business names. You can also find us on Instagram under both of those names. And you can email us at info, I-N-F-O, at Ethos Design Remodel. That's E-T-H-O-S-D-E-S-I-G-N-R-E-M-O-D-E-L dot <laughs> com. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, and so you can, you can track us down there. You can give us a call. You can... Um, yeah, engage with us on any of those uh, platforms. We would love to help you, love to, you know, work with you and collaborate and help you create, find, build your dream home. That's what we do. We do it with art, we do it with integrity, and we do it as sustainably as we possibly can because we care. And um, yeah, we're local girls, women. I still like to think of myself as a girl even though I'm almost 50. I'm like <laughs> young at heart. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> I second that. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. And um, also, thank you to Argos Productions. Thank you to Erica. Thank you to Justin. Thank you to Ellen, not Miranda. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. If you're watching, uh, make sure you check out Argos Productions. You can also find them on the Facebooks. You can find them on the Instagrams. Uh, you can find them on the Googles. You can just type Argos Production. It'll take you directly to their website. I know this because I've done it. Uh, they can help you with a number of things. So it's not just content for your business, but also content for your social media. And they can help you even with projects such as film and photography and all the other things. So check out Argos Productions productions, their website, uh, the link will be right here below once this goes on our YouTube channel. So thank you, Justin. Thank you, Erica, for allowing me to uh, have my Idaho friends here be part of your Argos Productions family. Uh, shout out to Jewel Case. Uh, Jewel Case is my employer. 
<laughs> and uh, I should be at work, but instead I'm over here. So thank you, Joe <laughs> Case. I appreciate you. Uh, you can check them out too here at the bottom. There will be a link. And if you're interested on battery technology, because we're a battery company and you want to be part of clean energy and have backup power or you need power for your mobile entrepreneur setup or you need some residential or commercial real estate backup, uh, energy backup, power backup, uh, we're, we're, we're the place, we're the please, we're the place to hit up. We just powered Tree Fort. That was fun. We just powered Tree Fort. No big deal. If you're not from Idaho, you don't know what Tree Fort is. But, you know, music festival, it was awesome. It was fun. I love it. And I cannot wait for it to happen again in March when we'll power it again. So, Jewel Case, if you go into their website over at www.jewelcase.com and you decide to buy something, use code JLPWR for 10% off. So. Thank you guys. I appreciate you all so much. Sarah, thank you so much for making yeah. time and hanging out over here with me over at My Idaho Friends. I appreciate you and I cannot wait to see what's going to be next for you guys. Thank you. And then I'll have you on again, Sweet. hopefully. Yeah, we'll bring her next okay. time. <laughs> all right thank you idaho and don't forget be sweet to somebody out there because man we need all the sweetness we can get cheers <laughs>